Cowboys kickoff goes to Adams. Frank Adams, nice run back, got it out to the 30. That's about the best spot South Carolina's had to start a drive in a while, a return of 18 yards. With Jack Corrigan, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us here at Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. There's the scoring drive, almost five minutes, and amply took it in from a yard out to run the score to 24 to 10 Florida State. The significance of Frank Adams back on that kickoff, Eddie Miller has not returned to the ball again. First down at the 30. Fuller out in the flat off that bootleg again and got it to the 34-yard line. Leroy Jeter, the H-back. Errol McCorvey made the tackle. Picked up about four to be second and six. Losing Eddie Miller, and unfortunately, we have not received any word on his situation. We saw him limp off the field in the first half, but it really changes the experience at wideout for South Carolina. On second down, straight up the middle is Bennett, and he's got a first down all the way to the 45-yard line. And boy, is this kid going to be a good one before he's done in Columbia. No doubt about that. 6'1", 200-pounder with a lot of strength, and... Another South Carolina first down and another Florida State injured player on the defense. And the injured player is Leon Fowler. I, but no, it wasn't Fowler. Fowler made the stop and somebody away from the point of the tackle. Shaking up on the play. There's been some hitting going on. John Davis had the shaking up, and he's on his feet now. Doesn't get any easier for Sparky Woods, huh? Well, as you said at the beginning of our telecast, Brad, this is really their bowl game because even if they win today, they aren't going to play, I don't believe. They wouldn't get enough. Yeah, I guess if they win their last three games, they would have enough. No, they still wouldn't have enough wins against a Division 1A Last team. week took them out of it. That's right. right. They have, you have to win six games against 1A competition now to be eligible for the Bulls. So this is the, the big day for Sparky Woods and company. They were tied by Louisiana Tech and Duke this year. To go with three wins and three losses. Florida State thinking about a blitz here on Fuller. It's first and ten. South Carolina Fuller changes things up and wants to throw the quick slant. Incomplete, intended for Brooks. Made the right call to anticipate a seven-man front. Robert Brooks, who has battled hamstring problems much of the year and is not a real big guy at 178 pounds, was a little, I don't want to say reluctant about coming over the middle, but he was cautious. You didn't give him the Gator Arms award yet, did you? Well, you can't say Gator Arms in Tallahassee. It has to be short arms. <laughs> Second and ten, South Carolina. Fuller, quick play fake, goes out in the flat again across midfield, Jeter, and Jeter's got another first down. They've gotten a lot of mileage out of guys out there on that left side today. I mean, Jeter out there on the left side, I should say. And we have got another injured player. Florida State keeps losing linebackers. That's DeAndre Clark, an outside linebacker who is playing in the ball game right now and Bobby Fuller with some patience knew he was going to get hit it was Clark who went over the top of Bobby Fuller at the end of that play and must have landed wrong and twisted a knee or an ankle watch DeAndre Clark number 91 go right up over the top oh yeah he just landed wrong on that left leg of his you know in his efforts to avoid the roughing the passer he he landed funny now starting to walk a little better. Boy, Virginia, what? What a job, George Welsh. Said, you know, you talk to people, though, in the conference, and they tell you that with the exception of last year when the Cavaliers struggled down the stretch, George Welsh teams get better as the season goes along. Bobby Ross, rambling wreck by only a touchdown. Notre Dame and Tennessee, a big game. And wow, all Irish there, huh? First down, South Carolina at the Florida State 43-yard line. Again, seven men up close on the line for Florida State. They'll take it straight up the middle, and it's Brandon Bennett to the 40-yard line. Bennett got Brandon three. Bennett Brandon there. Bennett right now 193 yards shy of having the all-time South Carolina freshman rushing record. So that's the type of year that he has had. He's got 48 yards on 13 attempts today. 
at passing yardage today. Almost dead even right now, Jack. 149 for Bobby Fuller, 145 for Casey Weldon. Second and seven for the Gamecocks. At the Seminole 40. Bennett again. Only about two more. And it will bring up third and five. Sterling Palmer, the outside linebacker, one of the first there. The sun has disappeared here in Tallahassee, and the wind, if anything, is blowing a little bit stronger, although now the sun tries to peek out again. But by Tallahassee standards, a wind chill in the 40s, I would guess, maybe even in the upper 30s, is not normal playing conditions. Third and five. Carolina four out of ten on their third down conversions today. Here comes the blitz. Fuller in trouble, and the ball is loose. And Florida State's got it. Todrick McIntosh with a fumble recovery. Florida State, one of the best in the country in turnover margin they are tied for second in the country they have now forced 31 turnovers this year and they have turned it over only 14 times themselves plus 17 is good enough to get you a lot of wins you there's the guy that. that got the fumble recover at the 38 yard line and Lee on a tough sweep but he got the corner and a flag down late and as Lee got it out near the 43. They're going to call Mike Morris for holding. The senior guard leading on the right side grabbed a hold of something extra. Even the seniors can't always disguise it. See if you can watch the right side. There you see him. He's got a hold of Marty Dye, he, he spun him all the way around, and I think that's what the officials saw. He still had the arms within the frame. You know, that's part of the new rule now. You can, you can extend the arms and use the hands. You just can't grab onto the hands. And I think when Dye spun and didn't lose contact with Mike Morris, that's when the officials made the holding call. Casey Weldon's been impressive today. 15 out of 21, 145 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and one interception. He's got first and 20 here on play action, and he's in a heap of trouble. But he got the screen somehow to Moore. Moore to the 30-yard line. Boy, that looked like it was going to be a jump ball when Weldon let go of it, and Moore ran under it. Cedric Bembry at six foot and 285 pounds, the nose man coming right up the middle, almost untouched. Casey said, well, I know I'm supposed to get pressure in a screen situation, but not that much pressure. Second down and 18. Casey Weldon's comparison of halves, both of them have been pretty good. And he'll throw again to the right side. Baker, did he make the catch? It's Eric Terrell, excuse me, and he did a diving catch at the 41. Good receivers and a guy who gets the ball to them. One of the hardest passes to throw well in football. And a Jack, Jack Corrigan-like catch at the end of it. Well, I wish. <laughs> It's still third down and long. Boy, you run the, the turnout route from one hash to the far sidelines. You've got to throw it 40 yards plus on a line. 50% on third downs on the day. Looking for third and long. Weldon in trouble. He might keep it. First down. He does a lot of things well. Great players make big plays. He wanted to go deep down the middle to his tight end, Warren Hart, much like they had done when they converted on fourth down on their last drive. That's where he's looking. All right, I can't get it. I got a bad knee. Somehow I'm going to get where I need to get, and where I need to get is beyond that first down marker. 
with that bad knee, he may not have 4-6-40 speed, but when he's healthy, he does. And he was plenty quick enough to get a first down at the South Carolina 49. Now back to the big fella Moore. He drags would-be tacklers to about three yards. We've got five minutes and 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's Florida State 24, South Carolina 10. Our halftime score was 17 to 10. And Florida State's opening drive of this quarter went 79 yards. And now you see what we have, a 14-point lead for the number one team in the country. And what does Casey Weldon do best of all? Well, maybe to borrow a line from Al Davis of the Raiders, just win, baby. When he has started for Florida State, they have not lost a game. 14-0. Trying to make it 15 straight. As somebody said, he's 14-0 as a starter. He's 1-0 as a cheerleader. That was last week when he didn't play. Amp Lee. Great moves. First down. To the 36-yard line. He just slips and slides until he finally sees the opening he wants. It's that patience again that great running backs have. Make that defender overcommit or make his commitment and then react to it. See what he did right there? Just a great move on Robert Gibson. Gibson had a line on him, so he said, all right, give me your stuff. And as soon as he saw it, he said, sorry, buddy, I'm going elsewhere. First down, FSU at the South Carolina 35. Ampley again, and somehow got away again. Seven or eight more before Eric Brown and Tony Watkins can drag him down. Watch how he shakes and bakes Bruce Pender on this play. But there's a significant difference in the shake and bake of Amp Lee. It's always still progressing. Watch the move here. He makes the move, but he's still progressing up the field. Many times a guy will make that head and shoulders fake there, but he's flat-footed and then has to gather himself and move forward again. Lee is always moving forward. The pride and joy of Chipley, Florida, about 75 miles west of here. More of the fullback to the 24, and another first down, Florida State. Bobby Brown in on the stop. When you pick up seven yards or so on first down, this is a tough team to slow down. Well, here's where it is. The, the common thread offensively and defensively for Florida State, when they get ahead, they go for the jugular. I mean, they don't, they don't get content when the game turns their way. They put it away. And they have had it most of this quarter. Amp Lee, open field again. Great move inside the 10. First and goal. Amp Lee is putting on a show on this drive. 17-yard run that time. For the junior from Shipley, who will take himself out. And as we laughed in the first half, about Amp not knowing Lenny Moore, but I gotta tell you, Amp, if Lenny Moore were watching this game, he'd be thinking about some of the things he did in his great career, because that was vintage Lenny Moore cutting off his heels. I got a feeling Amp's gonna look up Lenny Moore and Leroy Kelly this week. I got you. Sean Jackson in for him. Weldon back to throw on first and goal. Incomplete intended for Terrell. He made a diving attempt in front of Frank Adams. Just couldn't quite gather it. Well, in the first half, Shannon Baker got out the orange marmalade because he toasted Frank Adams. That time, they went after the youngster again, and he was equal to the task. He made it in a situation there where Casey Weldon had to throw it down and away from Terrell, and he just couldn't come up with the ball. Casey Walton, two touchdowns already today. Brings his troops up for the 10th play of this Florida State drive. A little draw. Jackson got close. Inside the two. I've been fortunate in my life to be around football for more than 25 years, and I still I'm amazed about running backs who know just when to make that spin as Sean Jackson did there. It's a gift. 
He got it to about the yard and a half mark. Third and goal, Florida State. This crowd will let you know if they get it in. Jackson again. Touchdown. to make a cut that time. He just had to get to the pylon. When you're a great running back, and Sean Jackson has a chance to be a great running back, sometimes you just got to say, I'm better than whatever is out there in front of me. Always had his eye on the opposition, but knew where that end zone was and found it. 149 to go in the quarter, and number one is pouring it on. 31 10. Let's pause now for this word from your local station. One excitement. Receivers for Bobby Fuller here as he'll drop the throw on third long. Hung in and got rid of it. McIntosh had a hold of him. There's no in the grasp rule in college football, and Bobby Fuller's knee was not down. Pretty good strength for the senior out of Miami, Florida. Because McIntosh has got him by the right leg, and somehow he stayed up long enough, saw Brandon Bennett out there, and avoided the sack. It'll still be a punting situation for Darren Parker. And Terrell Buckley back deep for Florida State. Another high kick. Buckley calls fair catch and lets it go. Let's see if South Carolina can get to it. Not quite. 23 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And it'll be Florida State with a 21-point lead on offense when we come back. At Nestler and Jack Corrigan at Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, where the top-ranked Seminoles led by Casey Weldon leading 31-10. And the total offense in the third quarter, almost all Florida State. Jackson, who just scored a touchdown the last time. He touched it, got the corner, and got all the way out to the 37-yard line. Pick up of 17. Frank Adams ran him out of bounds. Jackson's had some good games this year. He had 75 yards against BYU, 96 against Syracuse. And as I said earlier, averaging six and a half yards a carry. When you have out of your first two tailbacks, that kind of productivity, Amp Lee at better than five and a half, and Duke has taken the lead on Wake Forest, and Penn State pulling away from Maryland. Casey Weldon throws the out to Fryer, who made a diving catch, and got about six yards in front of Frank Adams. Stadium bounds, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. So at halftime, it was a seven-point game. Florida State has definitely stretched it out here in the third quarter. Once again. Just about set for the start of the fourth quarter here in Tallahassee. Renegade looks calm, doesn't he? His team comfortably ahead by 21. First and 10. Uh, rather second down and four Florida State and an end around Kevin Knox nice move got into South Carolina territory down to the 43 yard line Toby Cates stayed with him but Knox with a nice end around and a first down I don't know if Bobby Bowden would be the kind of guy that wants to fool around with computers he's got a computer like mine in terms of <laughs> offensive strategy but it was like well, let me check in my file here. Well, we haven't run this in a while. Let's try this. And usually his guesses are right. Toby Kate shaking up, trying to shag down Kevin Knox on that reverse. And he is at the 41-yard line, injured. The end of three quarters. Florida State had more total offense in the third period than they had in the first half. Right. And the ground game we talked about at halftime that had not produced much had uh, more rushing yardage in that third quarter than they had in the first two quarters combined. Now we talked about that, Brad, right at the beginning of the ball game. Casey Weldon's an outstanding quarterback. They have great receivers, but what makes Florida State 
so strong is they run the ball well enough to make their diversity impossible to defend against over four periods. Coming up next week, a couple of games. Wake Forest and Georgia Tech for Maryland at Clemson. Our Exxon Games of the Week next Saturday starting at noon. You can check your local listings for the game you'll see. Jack and Steve will have that Maryland-Clemson game, and Steve and I will be in Atlanta. So we've got a couple of good ones next week here today. Had a great game through about two and a half quarters, which is, it seems, about how long most people can hang with Florida State. Well, Toby Cates, who has just gotten back to health for the South Carolina Gamecocks, shaking up again. And that redshirt freshman is another young man they are very high on in their secondary. They have been decimated by injuries through the course of the season in that secondary. Norman Green, another good redshirt freshman for them, not even in the lineup because of a concussion suffered last week. Jerry Inman, they lost with a broken leg. You can't have that happening against this crew. No way. First and ten at the 43 for Florida State. Casey Well, plenty of time. Going long. Shannon Baker. And we'll have interference on Frank Adams. But that's a good penalty. Otherwise, it's a touchdown. That's exactly right. The most disappointed guy, boy, Casey Weldon took a pop letting this go, but Shannon Baker says, man, this is a touchdown for me, and this guy is mugging me. So they bring it back and will walk off the pass interference penalty as you see the hit that David Turnipseed put on Casey Weldon. It is a 15-yard penalty in college football and not at the spot of the foul on it defensive pass interference so that's why I said it was a good penalty not only did he stop the touchdown he at least temporarily slowed the march goalward by the Seminoles takes it back out to the 28 after they walk it out first and 10 Florida State and the Seminoles are going to take a timeout I'm out Florida State 14 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the ball game and with Florida State's timeout, we'll take one as well. 31-10, FSU. Not related to that young man, although at least he's keeping his ears warm. <laughs> it's a little cool in Tallahassee. But a warm third quarter has produced a 31-10 Florida State lead here. Just 16 seconds into the fourth and final stanza. On first down, great play fake by Weld. He might have too much time. Finally throws incomplete. Kevin Knox, the intended receiver at the goal line. Well, healthy, Jack, maybe takes off with that ball. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They run the bootleg action, and he had a good 10 yards of open space in front of him. Watch right here, the good play fake and the good down block as well. He's got a lot of room in front of him. Again, he's afraid to, to put too much weight on that front leg, the like that's got the strained knee ligament doesn't get enough zip on the ball second and ten at the south carolina 28 weldon back going deep baker's out there had it on his hands and couldn't hold it tony watkins covering but shannon baker just got a little turned around on that one and couldn't find the handle well that was because of the wind and the gust hit us moments later Right at the end of the play, Shannon Baker has to change shoulders. This ball's going to be over his outside shoulder. He's all set for it, and now the wind gets it and has to turn the other way. That's an extremely difficult catch. Shannon probably fell. He still should have caught it. The coaches, when they look at the film, will tell him he should have caught it. But it was a tough catch. You know, those are pretty good numbers, obviously, for Casey Weldon. But you take away the pass interference call that Jack and I both thought was a touchdown, and that was almost a perfectly thrown ball. He hasn't misfired too many times today. On third and ten, he will take off with this one, but he'll get down as fast as possible. And about a yard short for the first down. Eric Brown is there, so is Bobby Brown. He didn't know how to land. He, he wasn't really sure how he was going to go down there to protect that knee. 
It's fourth and a yard, and they're going to go for it. Watch how he finishes it here. I doubt if he's practiced his hook slide this week, right? It's like, well, let me protect. Yeah, see how he left that injured leg back to make sure it wasn't going to get hit. And Florida State will go for it on fourth down for the second time today. Last time it was a fourth and four situation, and they got a touchdown. And Rome's going to have to call a timeout here on fourth and one. That's because the huddle clock was down to just a second or two remaining, and he had no choice but to call the second timeout. Coaches don't feel so bad about wasting two timeouts early in the fourth quarter when you're ahead by 21 points. And while Bobby's not pleased, he's still got to be pleased that his team is rapidly moving towards their 10th win of the season. And look at some of the things on that Bowden resume. A total of 214 wins over his career. The second among active coaches in victories, as you see. They have four straight seasons of 10 victories, and this, if they win today, would be five straight years of at least 10 wins. And Bobby Bowden is just a pleasure to talk to, a, a great guy to be around, and one of his great lines about trying to win a national championship, he said, you know what? We've been leaving our putts on the lip the last few years. Eventually, we're going to knock one in the cup. Well, Bobby loves to play golf with the little note you just mentioned a moment ago, Brad, about trying to win five straight 10-win seasons. There are only two other coaches who have ever done that, Bear Bryant and Bud Wilkinson. Not bad company. Well, I should say not. Fourth down and a yard, Florida State with the 21-point lead. As you see, 13.43 to go. They stack up everybody tight. Weldon on a play fake wants a touchdown. And he got a touchdown. William Floyd from 20 yards out. When they get the lead, they go for the jugular. Like the days of Lombardi and Bart Starr, fourth and short, let's throw the ball for it all. I bet even Amp Lee remembers those names. That's right. <laughs> Thomas point after is good, and it's 38 to 10. The number one team in the land. Starting to show us why. Weldon to Floyd. That's his third of the day. Now his kick. Somebody better cover it. The tight end up to the 22-yard line is Mike Landry, actually a backup linebacker. That last drive for Florida State, 80 yards, seven Brooks plays. And on fourth and one, Casey Weldon threw his third touchdown of the day. And Casey's done for the day, I'm pretty sure. Bobby Fuller is not. Well, they've used 12 minutes out of a total of 17 and a half minutes on those touchdown drives. As you see the Heisman Trophy candidate, you, Desmond Howard and Casey Weldon, you wouldn't be wrong either way on the pick. I'd like to have both to start a team. DeBoer with a nice run. Got about nine. Bob DeBoer, a sophomore out of Omaha, Nebraska. Ran out there. John Davis finally brought him down. It'll be second and about a yard. Marky Woods knew this would be a tall assignment for his football team. I think the Gamecocks have shown well in this one. They just knew it had to be a perfect game to have a chance, and it's a young team that hasn't had a chance to be error-free at all this year. Second and one from the 31. And DeBoer again. First down and a bunch more. Out across the 40 to the 42. John Davis again made the tackle. It really bears noting here, Brad, for this South Carolina team, they had, as you watch Rob DeBoer, the, the banger from Omaha, get another first down for the Gamecocks. They really had two poor recruiting years because of the steroid scandal and then the untimely death of Joe Morrison. And the strength of their team is their fifth-year men and their freshman and redshirt freshmen. Everybody up close for Florida State is... DeBoer goes again, tough running, out to the 45-yard line. Kirk Carruthers and 
a group of other Seminoles out there. Rob DeBoer, one of those guys who doesn't get to spend as much time with the football program as he normally would because he's a great baseball player. He doesn't play during the spring practice time because he actually came to South Carolina on a baseball scholarship. Hit 273 last spring with four home runs. 22 RBIs, which is almost as many yards as he's got on this drive, I think. Got it out to the 46-yard line. Fuller to the air, maybe. Down he goes at the 40-yard line. Sterling Palmer, Todrick McIntosh. They've been a nightmare in there. Palmer's only going to get better. A sophomore, he is 6'7", 242. How would you like to have an outside linebacker that size? Who is also a 400-pound bench presser. That's an even more frightening aspect to it. He only had to press a 200-pound quarterback that time. It's third and 12 for South Carolina. And Fuller, with four wideouts, will work from the shotgun. Gonna roll to the left, try to buy himself some time. And tosses it to the Florida State bench incomplete. It will be a punting situation for the Gamecocks. Asim Petty was the intended receiver. Nowhere near where that one landed. And Darren Parker will come out to punt. Now about all we haven't seen today is that man have a chance to cut loose on a punt return. Well, he made that great over-the-shoulder catch of the one punt, but you're right, he hadn't really ripped one. The very first one, he got about 20 yards on the return, but it was negated by a penalty. He did get his 18th career interception, though, earlier today. Another nice punt. He's got room to run this one back. Buckley from the 15. Buckley across the 30. And out to the 37-yard line. 22 yards. For number 27. He was so patient, waiting for Howard Dinkins to get back and make a block for him that got him about seven or eight extra yards in the play. Watch the left side of your screen. Right here, he just uses his speed to outrun people, but he waits here. Okay, I'll wait now. Boom. Howard Dinkins is kind of low. Turned his back and said, excuse me. Virginia Tech's quarterback, Will Furr, said, you know, when's somebody going to draft this guy and get him into the pros where he belongs? <laughs> Brad Johnson, the new quarterback for Florida State. He was a relief pitcher for a victory last week. Now in there as Casey Weldon's day is done. William Floyd across the 40 to the 41 yard line. William Floyd on the carry. And of course, Brad. The comfort you saw the all purpose yards. It's another toss up, I guess, for the Heisman if you consider Weldon and Howard as the only two candidates. Nice bootleg and the. Uh, Tight end, Warren Hart. Ball loose. Did South Carolina get on it? Well, Robert Gibson really felt like he stole the ball away from Warren Hart, but the officials disagreed with him. They've used that wrinkle a few times, and it's, it's a nice idea. You, you run the naked action there, and you have a chance not only to run the ball if you need to, or you dump it to a big guy like Hart at 258 pounds as a tight end. It's that Eric Green syndrome. The huge <laughs> tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers is creating a new wave of tackles who can catch the ball. Ten minutes to play. Florida State leads 38 to 10. Johnson across the middle. Ball up for grabs. Incomplete and a penalty marker down. We're going to have defensive holding. I think we may have offensive holding. It was thrown by the umpire. And if they get through that, and are still number one. Whatever bowl game they go to, and if they win it, I don't think anybody argues about their status as the nation's best. Penalty markers down again. We may have South Carolina in the neutral zone. Closest game in the last five years, actually six years now, between these two clubs was a 17-point difference. Right now, it's Florida State by 28. And the defense lined up all sides. And with both these schools be joining the Atlantic Coast Conference, uh, with 
conference obligations, the non-conference games you play become more limited. At the 40-yard line, a first down. Play fake, Johnson, deep middle. Incomplete intended for Lonnie Johnson. His other tight end. Tony Watkins was there covering. We talked about Brad Johnson filling in and winning a game last week. And the fact that, as Jack mentioned, he was the starter for much of last year. And he and Casey Weldon are the best of friends. They play golf together. They play tennis together. And they both admit the only mistake we made, we both committed to Florida State the same <laughs> amount of years ago. <laughs> are they both being starters, one here and one somewhere else? But they're both high school All-Americans. And they both spent years behind Danny McManus and Chip Ferguson and Peter Tom Willis, and they learned well, didn't they? This is Floyd again. Nice play. Tony Watkins with a very nice play against the screen as William Floyd is going to lose yardage. Since 87, Florida State, with this upcoming win today, will have lost only two games in their last 30. That's some kind of winning tradition. There's the last four years and what has occurred. The hated Hurricanes here in Tallahassee, the only team better than them, and of course, that's the matchup next week that they have been talking about in Florida probably since last season ended. Number one and number two. Today, number one really put together a second half to lead 38-10. And South Carolina not done hitting, that's for sure. At least Robert Gibson's not as he put it on Floyd out there in the flat. And Florida State will have to punt. Nobody open down deep. You go to your underneath man and Robert Gibson with an exclamation point into the midsection of William Floyd to force a punt. Only the third punt of the ball game for the Florida State Seminoles. Scott Player with some pressure. Got a high kick. Robert Brooks has to fair catch it at the 18-yard line. Eight minutes and 27 seconds to go in the ballgame. 38-10, Florida State. And this game summary is brought to you by Schlitz Malt Liquor. Brandon Bennett had some good yardage early in the ballgame. Not much since then, and Bobby Fuller's just not had many at-bats because of that great Florida State defense in the second half. And Amp Lee and Casey Weldon just doing their thing once again. There it is, 72 yards of offense for South Carolina in the second half as Wright Mitchell comes in at quarterback. A redshirt junior from Atlanta. Uh, play action he wants to throw as he rolls, trying to get away, and he will not. Reggie Freeman, the outside linebacker, with great speed, ran him down. Fourth sack for Florida State. Freeman was injured in the first half, and he's hobbling there a little bit. You see the brace on the left knee. Out of Clewiston, Florida. Talking to Bobby Biden yesterday, I said, Coach, you know, you've had so many great offensive teams, and that's what you're known for, your gimmickry, your great offense. But I think you've got a pretty good defense. He said, that's why we're number one right now. And they have certainly proven it in this second half. As you saw a graphic moments ago, only 72 yards allowed in this half as Rob DeBoer adds to that total, but not by much. Few of the folks heading to the exit. 60,244 came out to watch it today, and some of them are going to try to beat the traffic home. Secure in the feeling that their Seminoles will be a perfect 10 when it's over. Wright Mitchell and what he's done this year in limited duty. Just over seven, uh, seven minutes to play. Third and short. And DeBoer, nice second effort. I think he got it. Needed to get out across the 29, and as you see, one of the officials, he got it by about the length of the football or a little more. Tough runner. Rob DeBoer has really captured the uh, hearts of the folks in Columbia. He had 700 yards on the ground last year, and he's got that never-quit attitude of bouncing off people. And he picked up a South Carolina first down. Uh, Chuck Amato, the assistant head coach, said to me, we were surprised he doesn't play as much, but he says, but the kid does a good job. He was talking about Brandon Bennett. Mitchell, with time, zips it, got it complete to his tight end. 
Matthew Campbell uh, across the 35 near the 36 yard. The ball cuts outside, away from that heat, got a first down, and he's still on his feet out to the 47, maybe the 48 yard line. Clifton Abraham made the tackle. Jack was talking earlier about South Carolina next year to go to the Southeast Conference, and they will be in the East Division with First down, Florida, Carolina. Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Bandy, and then the West will look like this with Arkansas's arrival. I don't think I want to be in either one. <laughs> well. <laughs> First down, South Carolina. Boy, you can hear the hits way up here. Still going on with six minutes to play. Not quite six minutes. Joe Ostaszewski made the tackle. Yeah, South Carolina with Joe North Ostaszewski Carolina and Clemson yet to go in this tough season. And you see Virginia just continuing to do. Still in the first half. Mitchell with a flag down. Wants to go deep for Brooks. Put it way out there, and Buckley almost had another one. Now the fans aren't happy, and Terrell's not happy in the end zone. Rob DeBoer, the lone setback, was a little bit ahead of the count. And that's where Courtney Mosey indicates. I would imagine that Florida State will decline the penalty, but fans are more unhappy that Terrell Buckley didn't get another INT. Buckley, such a gifted cover man with that great speed. And of course, because of where he plays, has been compared to Feel Deion Sanders. On the offense, decline, third down. And or Leroy Butler. He's now with the Packers, Sanders with the Falcons. I don't know, this kid's maybe as good, if not better, than those guys. I was going to ask, I was going to put you on the spot because I was thinking the same thing. Which one is better? I've watched Dion play both as a collegiate player and now with the Falcons. I don't know if anybody's got better football speed than he has. Well, Mitchell just got buried. Fuller came on a blitz from the secondary. Speed, speed, Corey and Fuller. more speed. Corey Fuller. He is a 4 3 5 40 man. He is as fast as. Buckley, Buckley and Buckley Shannon Baker. He was the third guy on that relay team, that relay team <laughs> from this football program. <laughs> on the 400-meter relay team for the Seminoles. Buckley back deep. This will be the sixth punt of the day for Derek Parker. He's averaged over 40 a kick. Just got rid of that one. Buckley at the 10. Got about eight or nine on the return. And with four and a half minutes left in the ball game, it'll be the Florida State offense to take over. And these guys know they're about to be 10-0. Early in the second quarter, uh, it, actually in the fourth quarter now, it's 38 to 10 as Florida State is just about to win that game. In the Big Ten and Ann Arbor. Twitter, the number one team in the country with a big lead and their third quarterback, Charlie Ward. Checks in, 6-1 sophomore. He'll work the FSU offense from the 19. Tiger McMillan takes it and he's run out over at the 24 yard line. Well, that's the interesting question, I guess, to ask here in Tallahassee with Johnson and Weldon both being senior quarterbacks. Will this young man be the guy who takes it over on a full-time basis next year? Either he or Kenny Felder. One's a left fielder on the baseball team. One's a point guard on the basketball team. Not, not your basic everyday athletes, these two guys. Going to throw it for the first time today and going deep. Incomplete. Bruce Pender put a big hit on at the 41 yard line. Felix Harris was the intended receiver. Time now to take a look at our Chick Most Valuable Players. 
Eddie Miller. But the receiver was already out of bounds, so the hit was legal. Nice play fake. Ward hides it and tried to go to Shannon Baker down the sideline. I think he was out of bounds and tried to come back in. Well, Shannon's figuring if he can't play in the Madison NFL, he can play in the CFL, Denver. and they're about 10 <laughs> yards wider, so he was still in bounds if he was playing up there in Toronto. Scott Player in punt formation. So Player's going to have to punt it back to South Carolina with just over four minutes left. <laughs> South Carolina is going to bring everybody, I think. Oh, actually, they've got the return on. Another good punt. Brooks has to backpedal all the way to the 23. Up to the 36. Got about 13 on the return. A good one for Robert Brooks. Brooks, a guy who's closing in on some pretty impressive records of Sterling Sharp at South Carolina. They want to stay, very stay number one with this upcoming win. And that's how many teams in the history of the NCAA have started and ended number one. It hasn't happened very often. Oklahoma, the last team to do it back in 85. Florida State about ready to break a school record for consecutive victories. This will be their 16th in a row today. And it will also be their 16th straight at home. They haven't lost since last year to Auburn back 20 to 17. Mitchell with all kinds of pressure. Penalty markers down. Dan Footman, one of the guys applying the heat. That was one of those situations there. Right, Mitchell was going to be in trouble whatever he did. On the offense, five yards from the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Second down. I think about right now, Wright Mitchell would like to throw the ball to the bus and follow it. Well, it's hard to teach your quarterbacks, your young quarterbacks, that when you're going to go down like that, the way the rule is now, just take the penalty because, or just take the sack, because now you still lose the down, you still get the sack, and they add five more to it. Second down and 25. 35, rather. Green pass to Wilburn. Nice cut back by Wilburn. Got it out to the 24-yard line. As he picked up 13 on the play. This is a very young South Carolina team, a team that is going to get better. In fact, in the confidence and boasting of young players, there have been a few of the true freshmen there with the Gamecocks who say, hey, by 93, we're going to win the Southeastern Conference. That's a strong statement, but they really feel they can. Third down at 24 for Wright Mitchell. You see all the receivers he'll have out there if he can get time to find one on long yardage. Well, he found one, but not enough for the first down. Got it out to Dave Pitchko. And Mitchell Pitchko. took a big hit again, and he's just now getting to his feet. But he hung in tough to make that delivery. Nice catch by Pitchko as well. Going up high against tight coverage to make the catch, but 10 yards shy of the first down. That shows you how important that grounding penalty was. Tell you what, no quit in the South Carolina team, though. They're outmanned right now against the number one team in the land, but they're still hitting and still hanging in there, trying to make something happen here in the late stages. Just over two minutes to play. Parker will kick again. This one will bounce in front of Buckley, and he's going to pick it up anyway. I didn't think it was a wise choice, but you never know with him. The illegal block on the return. Buckley's still on his feet, and he twists his way to the 24, and we have another flag fly in. Well, Terrell made it fun to watch. And lost six yards. <laughs> he doesn't lack for confidence after talking to him yesterday. We enjoyed it. Lots of penalty right there on the right side, no doubt about it. Number 10, Derek Brooks with the illegal block. Bobby Bob talking to Kenny Felder on the sideline. Virginia rolling to a win. Giving Georgia Tech trouble. And 
Penn State big on Maryland. Southern Miss making it tough on the Pirates. Don't forget next week. We got Kenny Felder, our fourth quarterback. Trying to get one out to Felix Harris. Here's Kenny Felder, who we said is an excellent baseball player, the designated hitter and left fielder on the Seminoles baseball team. He was drafted in the second round a couple of years ago by the Padres. Speaking of baseball, what a great stadium they have over here as we oh, look across. Right. Huh? It's beautiful. You can see it just to the left of the uh, stands over there. That's the setup they've got for the Seminole baseball team. Felder will hand it off. Florida State keeps it on the ground. Marquette Smith got it out of about the nine yard line. Ball carry flag at the end of the play. Yeah, it was a 17 to 10 game at halftime and then Florida State both offensively and defensively just dominated the last couple of quarters. Brad Nessler and Jack Corrigan with you from Tallahassee where a lot of the 60,000 pluses started to file out knowing that Florida State will win their 16th straight ball game overall and their 16th straight at home. And boy, number 17 is going to be a tough one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Next week, second-ranked Miami, the opponent for Bobby Bowden Seminole. And then the Florida Gators still lie ahead. But that young man, the quarterback for Florida State, there's what Casey Weldon, our player of the game on offense for Florida State, has done today. It didn't hurt his Heisman chances, Jack. No, nope. like I said, whether it's Desmond Howard or Casey Weldon, you wouldn't go wrong with either selection. From the 29, the fourth Florida State quarterback, Kenny Felder in to throw a screen pass. Marquette Smith. Got his hands on it, but it's incomplete. And we are down to 23 seconds left in this one. People here in Tallahassee, as you look at Kenny Fowler, the quarterback, but they're looking forward to little number four there, Marquette Smith, who couldn't hang on because of the pop on that screen pass. The high school player of the year, Marquette Smith. 88 touchdowns in high school for Marquette Smith at Lake Howell High School here in Florida. You saw Bobby Bowden on the sideline. This will be his fifth straight season winning at least 10 ball games. Robert Brooks on uh, the punt return will fair catch it at the 27. And South Carolina will have a couple of plays before this one is in the record books. 16 straight. That sets a new record. And Bobby Bowden looks nothing like Bo Derrick but he's still a perfect 10. 10 and 0, Florida State, 14 seconds from now. Let's go back to Raleigh now, some of you, and Steve Martin, Steve. So two plays left for Wright Mitchell. And there's one, and it's a completion. And it is a first down out to the 44-yard line to Asim Penny. Another big draft choice, uh, draft choice, excuse me. Well, in a sense, another big recruit for the Gamecocks, Asim Penny out of the Maryland area who people think have a chance, has a chance to be a real good wide receiver. They bested Notre Dame in getting Asim Penny to come down to Columbia. Six seconds left. Mitchell with one more pass attempt coming up. Got it to the same man, Penny. Uh, tried a little hook and ladder job. Ball's loose, the Fox run out. And the number one team in the country of Bobby Bowden is still number one. Final score, Florida State wins it over South Carolina with an impressive second half, 38 to 10. We thank you for attending. To Florida State by a final of 38 to 10. Let's pause now for this word from your local station. Watching JP Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. I watch uh, the Bobby Bowden show in California on my dish. So you ought to be able to watch it easy on WCTV Channel 6. It's great. Wow! Step up and take a bow. But make sure that you duck. 
because you're in for the snow job of your life with the Merry Maestro and her musical miscues. So stop bobbing around. This is a good one. It's Slam and Jam and Comedy on the next Rogan's Heroes. Sunday night at 11.30 on WCTV, Channel 6. In a row now for Florida State, the nation's longest active winning streak as the Seminoles also set a new school record. 38-10, the final over South Carolina, setting up the big matchup one week from today here at Dover. Already delivered their wish list to the Canes. Everywhere you go, people just say, hey, just beat Florida State. Or, you think you guys can beat them? And, you know, I, I just look at them and say, uh, you know we played West Virginia before them. Well, we'll still beat Florida State. If Florida State gets by Miami, then it's a two-week wait for the Gators who by night's end could have wrapped up their first ever SEC title. Only one thing would be left for the orange and blue, that's snapping a four-game losing streak to Florida State. Tallahassee and Brad Culpepper is facing the possibility of finishing his Gator career without tasting a victory over his hometown team. It means a whole heck of a lot, you know. For, you know I, it's hard for me to put it into words. But, um, I mean, if we win the SEC and we don't beat FSU, our season probably won't be complete. Uh, and there'll be something missing. Uh, for, in order for us to feel true satisfaction this season, we're going to have to, to uh, reach both those goals. Saturday. You know, luckily, we've got them here uh, in our home ballpark. And I, hope, I think that emotion of coming out here for our last time will have a, have a big effect on, on the way we play because uh, we're really going to have to play over our heads. Uh, everybody, every position is going to have to play you know, 100% or else we're, we're not going to win. Miami plays defensively. Look at this. This was a fourth down. They're ready to punt. Already the Seminoles have had a block punt this year, and here we go, and you pressure them, and, well, that's just the way to give your offense field position. Exactly. Our defense has been, been playing excellent all year, and uh, I think that's going to be the key to our national championship. And uh, we feel like this week our offense is going to start clicking, our defense is going to click, and uh, we're going to be at the top of our game. If you could only get rid of the... Every now and then, big play the team. See, it always seems like one big play in a game they get on you. Here was this one today, a 79-yard touchdown. Were you in there at that time? Yes, I was. Um, yeah, uh, our defense is playing so well, and then something like this occurs, and uh, we start to let up a little bit, and we let them right back in the ball game. Uh, with, if we can just get you know, the big plays stopped, uh, I think our defense is pretty much invincible. And uh, I think we'll have everything perfected by this coming week because uh, we're not going to be able to do that against Miami. Exactly. I mean, that's all it takes in a game like that is one play and boom, the game's over. Exactly. And uh, if we let Miami get in front of us, we will never, uh, you know, catch back up because they're an excellent team and, and we've been facing lesser opponents. But uh, we know that and I think we'll be... Team 7, the Wildcats lead it. You call this the Ponorowski, the up man. Pat Smith fakes it back. And he'll run it. He'll go 38 yards for the touchdown. Villanova would win it 33 to... <laughs> and there will be those who say it was another, well, maybe unimpressive victory. Florida State's 16th straight win. More accurately, maybe a methodical, revealing nothing new win. You saw it here on Channel 6 with a better seat than this woman certainly had. Gamecock struck first with a field goal, but then this play... Game. And Casey Weldon took him in right away to take advantage. First play of the second quarter. He finds Shannon Baker for the touchdown. Seminoles up for good 7-3. to three. Then special teams forced another Gamecock mistake. It comes in the form of pressure on the punter, and he will eventually get this pass away, but it looks kind of like that one. Garo Yuprimian threw in a long-ago Super Bowl for the Dolphins. Remember that one? Time to cash in again for Florida State, and Amp Lee will do the honors this time as he gets the pass from Casey Weldon. This will be his second touchdown pass of the day, and this was a great scrambling job by Casey. His 20th TD of the season, Seminoles up 17 to nothing. But South Carolina would get back in this game ever so briefly. Fuller would drop back and find that Eddie Miller has beaten Tommy Henry, and the pass is right in stride. 79 yards at 17 to 10 only. Florida State at halftime. After intermission, though, it was absolutely all Seminoles. Lee slips and slides his way in for his second touchdown of the game to boost the lead to 24 to 10 tribe. Then a thing of beauty. This is amply at his absolute best. Cutting, changing speeds, and then running tough at the end of this run. Now, it's only a 17-yard run, but it set up Sean Jackson's one-yard touchdown run. And then the coup de grace late in the game. Let's go to fourth quarter and fourth down and two. Seminoles go for it. And Weldon finds a wide open William Floyd and drops in the touchdown pass. That put the capper on a 38-10 victory, a win that came despite a cautious approach by the Seminoles. Oh, I don't know. I think we probably substitute. I was trying to, I was trying to substitute Bennett in and out because I didn't want him to have to block. I won't do that anymore. 
uh, I, was, I didn't want him to have to block with his sore shoulder. I wanted him when there, was we going to run him or throw to him. And I think I, I lost a lot of continuity today. I was running folks in and out, never, never could get a combination in there. And, and uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. Uh, well, it was a 17 to 10 or something like that. And we said, that's enough of this crap. Let's go play football. And uh, we came out and played like we should. The teams are studying us really hard. Uh -huh. And I guess we're, you know, we have a great defense. And they're trying to find the one.